Good fish, guys. Come on in. That's a big one. Nice white. Right. There we go, a beautiful one to start out the morning. Perfect. All right, check her out, guys. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna get her back in the water. Beautiful white bass right here, and we're gonna keep catching them. All right, so basically today, guys, I wanted to make a video on fishing paddle tails. So paddle tails of 101, I wanted to get into rigging them, different ways you can rig them, different ways you could work the bait. Uh, basically the basics of paddle tails, why they're so effective. And while we're doing it, I'm just gonna be catching some fish. Afterwards, I'm gonna take y'all back to the place and we'll really, really get into the rigging and get into the rods and ratings and whatnot. But anyhow, I'm going to get this bait back in the water and we're going to keep talking about it. So thanks for joining me today, guys. Uh, I really, my, really what I'm trying to do with this episode, I guess what I'm saying is try to make a more educational video for guys who maybe don't fish paddle tails that often um, and show you why you, you probably should be fishing them and, you know, that, that there is a paddle tail and there's a way to rig it for any kind of environment you're fishing. So... Uh, thanks for watching guys. I'm gonna get get this rod back in the water because I just got out Caught a fish probably second cast and I can't wait to catch some more. So let's get back to it I am fishing the beautiful Cumberland River today. Just look at that All right, my friends. So we are starting out with a quarter ounce jig head uh, It's not perfect. Just got beat up by that fish a little bit, but it'll do um, This plastic is hard to kind of reset. This is a z-man diesel minnow we'll do our best to kind of fix it up on there yeah that should do uh got a quarter ounce jig head right there you can see with an exposed hook got that tied on with the palomar knot not too worried about that tag in and we are running eight pound fluorocarbon on a 7.4 medium powered fast action rod now a jig head for me is my all-time favorite way to fish it and it has its pros and cons so you're gonna lose a lot more fish like this especially when you get a bigger bass hitting you that kind of might, if, if you got mainly largemouth in your area, I think EWG is probably the way to go. And I do have some EWG jig heads, those extra wide gap hooks, the bigger ones. I'll show y'all in a, in a second, right after we catch another fish. But for me, the reason I like to fish this is because of the variety of species I have here. We got sauger, walleye occasionally, drum, white bass, uh, largemouth spotted bass. This, this jig head is gonna allow those white bass, which is kind of what we're targeting. Oop, I bet that's a large mouth right there. Let's get this bad boy in. To get that bait in its mouth a lot better than having a big old DWG on it. Check out that beautiful largemouth, guys. Wow. On the old paddle tail. Now, I'm gonna get her back in the water real quick. All right. Thanks for, thanks for being part of the show. All right, you can see the way I'm working it right now. What I'm doing is jigging this bait. So I'm letting it fall once I know I'm on bottom pick up a little bit of that slack and give it a few pops give it a few more pops and basically I'm trying to look like that girl in the horror movie that falls down and can't quite seem to keep running that's being chased down kind of making it look like the the easy catch something's wrong with it it draws more attention to that fish and it leaves that bait in place a little bit longer for that fish to hit it while I'm still in part in action on it so instead of a straight retreat which straight retrieve is extremely effective as well. But I find in my area, 
This method works very, very well for white bass especially. I have a hard time fishing these baits on an EWG just because of how effectively I personally can fish this jig head and how well it works in my area. The ability to work it, it really makes me feel productive while I'm fishing. So maybe it's just kind of a, a personal confidence thing. But as I mentioned before, you do lose a lot more fish than with an EWG. You really got to get them in once you hook them like this. You really got to keep that pressure. And hook set wise, if you are newer to fishing, a lot of guys kind of trip out about hook sets. If you're fishing an exposed hook, especially, you let the fish worry about that hook set. You just apply pressure once you once you get bit. Not a big deal. That fish is going to hit that bait hard enough. You pulling that pressure on them, it's just going to stick that hook right in them. It's a smaller hook. You kind of really only got to worry about hooks. That's when you're punching through plastic. So if you're fishing a paddle tail in a real weedy area and you embed that hook in that plastic, then I'd worry about it a little bit. But... Well, guys, some of the cons of this bait, or this way of rigging it, I should say, on that uh, smaller jig head are, um, you're gonna kind of liven up your chance of snagging uh, a lot. You're gonna double it. You know, you got that exposed hook running. So if you're fishing timber, you're fishing heavily grassy, weedy areas, um, that's probably not the right choice for you. Maybe you can make it work. I mean, these are all just suggestions based on how I fish and where I fished, but uh, that's an issue. Another big issue with them is I got a love-hate relationship. I feel like I catch way more fish this way, just my ability to work it. However, I think I also lose way more fish this way. That big old extra wide gap hook, whether you got a two, three, four aught, you're gonna really, really get that fish. Got a nice big old barb on there. These smaller hooks, when we do hook one, especially these bigger fish, these bigger largemouth, you might be in some trouble. Uh, you gotta really keep that fish down. If it does jump, there's a big old chance of it spitting it. Almost why I stopped using uh, certain jig heads and opted for other ones, and certain baits as well. Oh, there we go. White. I guarantee you. I'll keep this fish pinned pretty well if you're fishing stuff like this. And I've got a lot better chance of, uh, of catching these beautiful white bass. Like I said, look, their mouth's kind of small. It's going to be having on. It can get in. I'm caught them on crazy things. It's caught them on big old crankbaits, but it's uh, a bit more difficult for a fish like this to get an EWG in its mouth. Pretty white right there, guys. Look at her, stunning. Get you back in. All right, guys, we are walking down river just a little bit, letting our uh, spot all replenish over here. I am seeing a lot of action over here. I'm thinking whites. I don't know if we'll be able to catch them on this or not, probably, but not walking too far. Anyhow, this is one for you guys that snag up constantly, fish those real snaggy areas and get pissed. That can't really do that exposed hook thing. So what we got is a ball head jig on an EWG. And I'll show you all exactly how to rig it. It's pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. But I fish this with, with more of a straight retrieve. I do jig it a bit. A little pricey, a little more pricey than those ball head jigs I like to use. Uh, however, when you do stick one on it, you're really going to stick them. All right, so what's going on right now is that these whites aren't able to get this EWG in their mouth. So what we're going to do, instead of wasting a bunch of time here, catch some fish because I haven't caught a fish in about 30 minutes now guys so tie on our little quarter ounce or let me show y'all how 
much more effective this is for me personally. All right, for old Palomar. And then I'm gonna take y'all into the the old marina, and we'll we'll try to work those other uh, hooks and techniques. They just don't work as well here, and that's the truth about it. I could stand here and try to fish them all day, and sure, probably catch an occasional fish, or I can do what works right here, and then go get some fish on somewhere else. Oh. Alright, you gotta see those wakes spots for sure. Let's see. Oh, the pretty ones. Aggressive spots, man. Good fish. Come on. Hard fighters, man. Pretty one, a little fat chunk. Wow, look how fat she is. What a chunker, man. Awesome fish, feeding up for sure. All right guys, we are gonna throw this hybrid swim bait jig by VMC now this is a screw lock one well they got this all packaged up all right guys so got our Kytec it's 4.3 inch we got this screw lock jig I'm not crazy about these but let's stick it on through and basically just gonna wrap, wrap, and there we go. Basically, what you want it to look like. The reason I don't like them is because uh, it does take time to rig these up. So maybe if you're not snagging like I do, uh, might be the move for you. Me, I lose a lot of baits when I fish this river, so last thing I want to be doing is wasting five minutes screwing on a bait and I could just slide it over a hook keeper but that bait is uh, not gonna slip down which is a huge pro about it and uh, yeah we'll see if we can get a, a fish on this big and got a nice leaf on and I'll just keep this bad boy tied on for a bit. We are throwing this on the medium heavy. It is a three eighth ounce, so it's a little heavier. Don't really trust it on my medium quite as much. But maybe we'll leave this tied on. If I see some uh, bigger bass busting shad, we'll throw this out there and catch one on it. It does have a great wiggle to it. I mean, it's a, a very effective uh, way to rig these baits, but. I'm thinking we're about to jump spots to get some fresh real estate. We've been fishing this spot out for quite some time now. Pros about this uh, way of rigging. It's, there we go, that's a fish. It stays on there. I mean, that fish, we got that fish hooked, man. What is this, a fat little spot? Nice fish. Nice fish, large mouth, beauty. 
See, if we had a jig head, I don't know if we would have had as much luck. A standard jig head, a smaller one. Oh, you splashed me in the face. That's a big one on there. Bigger bait, bigger fish. Not always the case, but my man Kyle told me that old elephant eat peanut thing. Oh, he's fat too. Look at that belly. Man, this got to be close to a three. We'll throw it on the scale. It's the biggest one we caught so far. All right, guys, check out this beautiful largemouth on that screw block jig head. Man, we are having just a fantastic day on the water. I am thrilled, set out to make this video. It's turning out quite well. We'll see if we can catch them on a couple other of those jigs. I'm not 100% sure. I know uh, what we're doing is working so far, so maybe we'll stick around with that. But uh, I do want to show you all back home. I got a few other different jigs, different ways to rig them. I want to show you the way my brother does it for real grassy areas because he fishes a lot of grass. He showed me things I'd never seen before, so. And they're inexpensive, but let's get a weight on her real quick. All right, y'all, we are zeroed out. Well, two six and seven eight sounds basically two seven, but that is a nice fish. Nicest one we've had all day. And let's get you back in, girl. Thanks for being part of the old uh, old show. Let's grab some coffee. I was just saying we should jump. We caught that nice fish. Maybe we'll stick around for a bit. No, you can see minimal damage to the kai tag. It didn't get torn up too bad. Um, that little bit of splitting was for me putting it on, doing a crappy job. But we also don't have any bait slipping off the hook anything like that get it right back in the water benefit of this jig the hook is bigger um it just helps me bring in those bigger fish so I'm, I'm sure glad we got to uh get that largie on all right guys so let's uh talk retrieve i guess i'm doing my best to i didn't write a script i probably should have been a lot of dudes do i decided to come out and do some fishing and maybe throw out what advice i got about them but uh, I'd say the most common retrieve with these that I see are is just a straight one, just throwing it out there, straight up retrieving it. Now there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, certain, like if I'm running an EWG on these, that's probably what I'm going to be doing. Now, other retrieve you saw me doing a lot, just straight up, just throwing it out there. Reeling in that slack, letting that bait fall, kind of keeping that line somewhat tight so I can feel a bite if something hits it on the fall, and jigging it back. I mean, just kind of flicking it in that water column, trying to maintain somewhat of a tight line, and I'm bringing her in. Now, that's probably my all time favorite. It makes me feel productive, it makes me feel like I'm doing something, and uh, probably catch more fish on it than any other retrieve, and it's probably because I use it more than any other retrieve. Another method I've seen. And I do use with uh, weighted belly EWG hooks. It is casting it out there. And letting it kind of sink. And raising up that reel, giving it a few reels. And guiding it back down. Bringing it back up. Guiding it back down. And when I am doing a straight retrieve, we'll talk about that a little bit more. I like to throw in a quick snap every once in a while, especially if I got that feeling I'm being followed and that fish isn't biting. I'll reel in, snap, reel in, snap, and hope that entices a bite. And uh, a lot of the times it does. As for speed of retrieve, I talked about a gear ratio a little bit. I like to vary. Sometimes I like to slow roll. I'll get hit real good on a slow roll. Sometimes I burn them. I have a video I just put out recently where I was just literally ripping these bad boys in and getting hit like that. I'm pretty much get out on the water and I don't have a set idea of how I'm gonna do it. Um, I just kind of experiment and see what gets me hit. But I'll start with with the mid tempo.
All right, nice fish, guys. Come on in. Come on in. Oh, beautiful spot. They fight so hard. I mean, this guy is definitely smaller than that largey. I'd say put up twice the fight. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Look at that belly, man. We are getting some fat spotted bass. Man, these spots are running hard today, guys. Look at the belly on that one. Absolutely beautiful. Another one for that big old jig. All right, guys, we all dealing with a lot of grass. Um, areas you need to go weedless. This is the one my brother taught me. So we're using this uh, swimming shad one. I think it's a four incher. Basically, you got an EWG. And you got a one eighth ounce to a quarter ounce bullet weight. I'm using a one eighth right now. That's what I brought. And we're going to go through that nose. Pop right out the bottom by yay much. Enough plastic to uh, cover up that eye. And simply gonna put that EWG right through her. And I don't know if we're gonna be able to get as good as a bite over here, but let's give it a shot. Man, we might have to move in somewhere. These boats are getting just out of control, guys. It's like we got that after work rush coming in on the water, so. We might take this show into a little more protected area. River's been real good to us today. It's gonna be hard to do, but it makes it real hard to fish when you got a boat cruising by every five minutes. So, we're at our next location now. I don't know if there's gonna be any fish here, but we're about to find out. Oh yeah. Something's busting these fish. I'm thinking skipjack. I'm thinking we got a downsize. Get a little jig head on and we're gonna be smacking them. All right, guys, so this is why we... All right. This is why we decided to throw on that smaller paddle tail. I had a hunch. This is what we were dealing with. That's a nice size one. So this is skipjack herring some migrant species they're actually extremely interesting fish they are brackish so they come to us all the way from the gulf of mexico they eat up shad they absolutely love it and they will be the first fish to wriggle a hook in your hand i have received many injuries from handling those fish carelessly but i had a feeling that was what was hitting my bigger paddle tail. Could not get it in its mouth. You see, they do have smaller mouths. They do go for smaller fish. Another thing to think about when selecting the perfect paddle tail to use the species you're catching. So we changed up real quick. We're throwing that big one. I felt it get him pelted, but I did realize we couldn't catch what was trying to eat it. So I like to bring three inches, sometimes 2.75 inches and some bigger ones too. Good morning, everybody. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. I had a great time making it as always. So it is pretty early over here when I'm filming this right now. Oh, bear with me. I wanted to get this video out there today for this weekend, but um, uh, I, I did have some family in town, so that's kind of why I have a slight lapse in my videos. I try to put out three long ones a week, but uh, you know, life stuff happens. So, anyhow, guys, I got that boy Mars in the house. What's up, Mars? How you doing, buddy? Good boy. See, I got a ton of paddle tails out and jigs and that kind of stuff. It's a huge mess. But let's get into it. So, I started out, guys, uh, throwing that 
uh, Z-Man, got some right here. I actually just bought another pack of these because I enjoyed them so much. That Diesel Minnow, I'm really, 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 really fond of this. I actually just uh, filmed another video. Uh, I haven't edited it through together where I am throwing this bait, kind of giving a little review on it. So I'll, I'll spare y'all from that one right now. But I did have this j uh, rigged on a, uh, where did I put that? quarter ounce jig head. So these are just the generic uh, Bass Pro Walleye Angler unpainted round jigs. And that's just what they look like right there. So you got a nice little hook, uh, kind of smaller little hook. Heavy enough wire not to get bent out. Weak enough wire where if I'm throwing like 14 pound, I could probably bend that hook out. I haven't really tried it. I've been throwing it on pretty light line. I was running this on eight pound fluorocarbon, but you got a nice little, nice little round jig right there. I'm a big fan of these. They're inexpensive and they're halfway decent. So I will buy a ton of them to use. So uh, moving on from that, I ended up throwing the BKK Silent Chaser. So I did get these ones off Tackle Warehouse. It was a brand I was unfamiliar with and uh, ordered some. It was my first time throwing it this video. Didn't catch a fish on it, but I did like it. I liked the action. It was a solid way to rig them. I have used this kind of type before. Uh, it's got a basically a ball jig and a three-out EWG hook on there. They're pretty well put together. I like them. Following that, we ended up throwing that screw lock one. So I am gonna put all these baits that we actually caught fish on in the description. Unfortunately, I snagged all those. I only had three out there, I lost them all, but I was running a larger 4.3 inch Kai Tech, which, there we go, you can see it's it's got some size to it. Typically, I don't really go higher than 4.3, or uh, 4.5, I should say. But, uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes it happens, but, do have these bad boys I want to throw eventually maybe when fall comes about these massive spark sheds they've just been I think I've had these for like at least a year now and haven't even thrown them yet but I really really like these I like the smaller spark sheds I'm all about those but anyhow guys um, rigs I didn't really cover I did a pretty good job covering the majority of them uh, however uh, the Weighted belly EWG one. Well, that's what I call it. Let's see. Gamakatsu calls it a weighted super line EWG hook. Uh, these are when I was talking about those three reaches. I was talking about the third one. I like to use where I kind of raise it up, give it a few reels. I like to use that when I'm using this type of hook. Now, um, I do have a video out there, I think, where I am fishing this one. But these aren't too expensive. They're not too hard on the wallet. The way I like to rig these are, yeah, with some plastics, you could probably shove the whole thing through. But if your plastic's not that durable, I like to uh, kind of line it up on the bottom of it right there. I'm going to take that eye. I'm going to poke, or uh, excuse me, I'm going to take that point of that hook and I'm going to poke it right through the nose, okay? Pull it back through. And then I'm going to take that eye of the hook and stick it through like that. Line her up, of course, and oh, oh, oh. it's too early to be playing around like this. And there we go. But a uh, nice little rig right there. And you can get those at majority of tackle stores. But <clears throat> anyhow, guys, I guess I didn't really get into line choice, which is fluorocarbon for me 99% of the time. It just makes sense. It sinks. It's nearly invisible. That is why I throw fluorocarbon with the bait that I like to work on the in the bottom of the water column for the most part. Sometimes I'll throw a little uh, light braid if I am doing like panfish, paddle tails, or uh, mono. Kind of save money. And uh, I just got a box of these. It's literally like a big old box full of them. I absolutely love them. It's a tiny little paddle tail right here, a two incher that I like to use for panfish guys, but uh, it kind of goes over line. Color wise, I could do a whole video on color selection and uh, whatnot. What's up buddy, you itching like crazy. Color wise, 99% of the time, if I'm fishing the Cumberland, I'm probably gonna be throwing white. Actually, I shouldn't say that. I do have like three other videos out there where I'm not. But so if my water clarity is, I had that stainage on the water, it was 
pretty stained and I was fishing the open river. So I wanted to draw attention to my bait. I wanted it to be something I thought the fish would see, something that would stand out. And it just gives me confidence. So I really, really like throwing white for that. So any kind of white, you know, pearly, off-white, whatever, um, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be probably throwing that if I'm fishing like somewhat stained water. If I'm fishing really clear water, which I got some crazy clear creeks here, I'm gonna be throwing more of a like green pumpkin-y type thing. You know, let me see what I got. So like, something like this, a little silver in it, the uh, H2O Shimmers. This is Academy's like generic brand, I'm pretty sure. Which they're pretty solid, they're pretty inexpensive as well. Um, something like that. I do throw this, it has a good amount of white on it. On the Cumberland. But yeah, some kind of creek stuff I like to throw, like something like that. All right guys, so rod wise, I was using a Dobbins Champion HP Extreme, my all time favorite, but I was using a medium 7.4 fast action rod for the uh, quarter ounce jig head. For the 3 eighths, I was throwing uh, the St. Croix Victory Series. It is a 7.1 fast action medium heavy, so it's got a little more meat to it. I like throwing those 3 eighths ounce ones. Another thing to take into account is uh, that this plastic does weigh something so whether it's a quarter ounce or something you do have to tack that weight onto the hook I used to I don't know why manufacturers don't stamp that weight right on there to help guys kind of figure out what they're doing but I mean that's something to talk about if I am throwing something heavier than that if I have a half ounce uh, weighted uh, swim jig or whatever I'm throwing I'm gonna be throwing it on a bigger rod a heavy rod something like like this heavy 7.6 fast action or I got one I like to use uh, right up here this mojo bass one the old mojo bass model those new mojo bass ones are pretty crazy look and I kind of want to get my hands on one and uh, feel it out see what it's like I did see one online when I was looking around at rods and get a pretty poor rating so I was I was surprised about that but I am a big St. Croix fan anyhow guys I think I I covered the majority of what I wanted to cover out of this video. I hope you found it helpful or entertaining at the very least. And if you ever got a suggestions, questions, what have you, go ahead, drop a comment. I'll get back to you. But anyhow, guys, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And I hope you get some good fish on. I got to get working. I'm making a soup. I'm making a bison soup. So I don't know if you follow me on Instagram. If you do, I'll probably post some pictures of it. It's one of my favorite soups uh, to make. It's like a soup stew hybrid almost. I don't know. I guess I consider it a soup because it is very brothy. It's a, a thinner broth to it. But anyhow guys, I'll catch y'all later. Uh, I will uh, put all that information, the baits I actually caught fish on and the rods in the description of the video. If you are curious about that, uh, I am on Instagram at Kentucky Angler. Uh, there's an underscore uh, for the angler part, but catch y'all later. Take care everybody.